Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's LT and today, close that down right there. Today we're starting off with a road trip. I got some parts that I need to pick up for the OBS K2500 Suburban. You guys have seen this project sitting right outside there. The door locked. Yeah, that guy right there, the K2500 Suburban. There's a few interior parts that I need to pick up and thankfully Facebook Marketplace has what I need. There's an ashtray that's missing somewhere down there. I'm looking for an overhead console and some bucket seats. So let's hit the road, see what we can find. I've been looking for a decent pair of front bucket seats for the Suburban for a very long time, or basically since I bought it. And this is the best pair that I've been able to find. And they were only $75, so I guess I can't complain at all. In fact, I really am happy. Now, they do have a little bit of a wear spot on this side. Uh, the foam, you can tell, is a little bit broken down. But overall, they're not bad. Now, most seats that I've seen, you know, the base on the driver's side is just completely worn through. The fabric is torn, they're stained, they're nasty. But like I said, these, especially considering I only paid 75 bucks, super happy and well worth the drive. It was about an hour trip. Now, luckily, there's another guy in the same general area who had a few more parts for sale. I grabbed one of these front, uh, well, I can't call it a skid plate because it's made from plastic, but my Suburban was missing this. So I'll have to get rid of the orange paint. The uh, dome light assembly and the ashtray on mine both were busted up. And I had a short ceiling console, but I always liked the full length ceiling console. So I grabbed one of those. You know, it's got the like garage door opener cubby there. It's got like a little sunglasses storage and a little CD storage up there. I always like those. I always put them in every OBS Chevy that I have. Now, I'm not gonna get to that stuff today, but I will do a video on it in the future, and I'll show you how to put those things in. It is a little bit intimidating if you haven't done it before. It's really simple, but you do have to cut a chunk out of your headliner, and that can be a little bit intimidating. But like I said, that's for another day. Today, I'm gonna be working on the charge pipe on Ugly Truck. And last time, I showed you guys the problem I was having making that last transition out of the throttle body while still being able to clear the hood. But the pipe, or the coupler rather, that I had or was waiting on just showed up. This guy right here, this is a 45 degree reducing silicone coupler that goes from four inch to three and a half. And I'm running a tight three and a half inch aluminum 90 on the end. Uh, I'm probably gonna cut this side down a little bit more. I had to cut probably, I cut this two inches or so off the end of this to kind of suck it back down and get it underneath the hood. And I'll probably still trim this one back a little bit to get this 90 a little bit further back just to ease that last transition down. But enough talking, I guess it's time we just need to get to work. So I did something here kind of dumb. I had a really good weld going, so I just wanted to keep welding, but then it opened up the gap on this side just a tiny little bit. Now it's not a huge deal, there's not a lot of stress in it because I can close the gap up with just a little pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a ratchet strap, just kind of close that gap and tack it on this side, that will be good to go. Thank you. 
I'm way happy right now because I feel like I've got the machine dialed in and this is a really good quality of material to be working with. So the welds, they're turning out fantastic. I mean, for me, especially compared to some of the other stuff that I was working with, you know, the cast aluminum. Uh, I'll show you a couple of good sections right there. Those little big white fuzzy spots, those are where the machine starts each time. But like I said, for me, I'm super happy with how this is turning out. Now I've got three of the four bends welded together and I haven't welded the last one in yet just because this alignment is probably the most critical to control clearance around the upper fan shroud, the lower radiator hose, the fan motor, and then I can't run into the serpentine belt or the harmonic balancer. So I did just double check it. My original alignment mark is actually still spot on, but it's just one of those things that pays to you know, take that little extra step just to get chunks welded together and double check the alignment. Now, before I weld the final pipe on, I am going to bead roll a small hump into the end right here just to provide a little bit more grip for the hose clamp so this guy doesn't want to push out when the engine's under boost. And trust me, it's a lot easier to bead roll just one elbow or one straight section of pipe before you get it welded to the whole assembly because, I mean, think about it, you've got that whole thing spinning around. It's just going to be a lot easier to get a good bead roll on it now rather than later. So. I'll bead roll the end of the pipe. I'll weld that elbow onto the first section of the charge pipe and the upper half is pretty much done. I'll put it back in and then I can work on the bottom half and get it connected up to the intercooler. I've got the mock-up complete on the charge pipe, and right now it's in three separate sections. The upper section, that's fully welded, you saw that earlier. The middle section is now fully welded, which I was just working on a second ago. And finally, the lower section, which is basically just one elbow. Now, the reason I haven't welded everything together just yet is because I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna be able to get it in and out all in one big chunk. And that's mainly because of the little bend or the last angle that goes down into the intercooler. Now, if I can't get it out in one piece, I'm gonna to have to modify this charge pipe just a little bit. And that's kind of why I didn't tack weld this reducer on all the way. Uh, the reducer, that's because I'm running three and a half inch charge pipe, but the intercooler has a three inch inlet and outlet. Um, so that'll just make the transition between the two sizes. But if I can't get this pipe to work in one piece, I'm gonna to have to cut this section right here, the uh, three and a half. I'm gonna to have to cut it back a couple inches and I'm gonna to have to extend the elbow that mates up to this of the same amount and then bead roll both of those connections and just use another silicone couplet. Now I hate to do that because it's just another opportunity for leaks. Anytime I'm building, I don't care if it's a charge pipe or a section of exhaust, it's got to be in as big or as long of a section as you can get it to easily get it in and out. I mean, obviously to service things like my downpipe, I've got a V-band on either end and you've got to be able to get it out. You can't have one exhaust system go all the way from the front of the truck to the back, but just as big of chunks as possible. So anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this underneath the truck. I'm gonna mark the two seams that I need to weld together, one up between the first two pipes and one on the last elbow. I'll tack weld it out here on the bench and then I'll try to get it in and out. And if I can, great, I'll just finish weld it. And if not, it means I got a few more steps worth of work to do.
Thankfully, I am able to get the charge pipe in and out of the truck in one solid piece, which means there are very few chances of extra boots popping off or leaks developing. And in my opinion, it just makes for a better overall finished product. Now, I do kind of wish I started building this thing from the bottom and working my way up. It, it would have been a lot more difficult, but all the best welds now are hidden down at the bottom of the pipe. Now, you guys do always ask about machine setup, so here's what I use to weld this entire pipe. I had 80 hertz on the AC frequency, 60% electronegative on the balance, and about 125 amps for overall machine power. Now, that is a little bit more power than you necessarily need for this piping because I think it's like, it's about 80 thousandths thick, but having that little bit extra power available if you just want to goose it with your foot, it lets you get that bead nice and hot and lets it flow really, really good. And in my opinion, that's what it gives it that nice looking weld and it gives for better penetration as well. Now, there are just two things that I need to do to finish up this charge pipe. Number one, I've got to install this guy right here. That's a 3 8 inch NPT aluminum bung, and that's going to be for the inlet air temperature sensor. And then I get to install the flange for the blow off valve. So, back to work. So I got this charge pipe in probably 20 minutes ago and I got a bunch of work to do. I got to get this video edited, but I've just been sitting here and staring at the engine bay because for whatever reason, you know, the fab work's not done yet, but for whatever reason, this one charge pipe being in, it just, it makes the engine bay look so much more complete. And I know this is going to sound super cheesy, but this is like a dream come true. You know, I've had this plan about turbocharging an 8.1 for a very long time. And I had a lot of you know, goals and requirements. It had to be a top mount turbo. I didn't want to go remote mount. It's an S480, it's a massive turbo, 60 millimeter wastegate, three and a half inch charge piping, four inch down pipe. You know, I, w I wish I would have kept track of all the hours of fab work because between the manifold, the crossover, the up pipe, the four inch down pipe, the intercooler tubes, mounting the intercooler, you know, I just, there, shoot, there's got to be a hundred hours or more in time just to get all this stuff planned out and built. And I got to say, thank you guys, honestly, because each and every one of you subscribers and each time you watch a video, it just makes it possible for me to do this. This is a passion. This is a hobby and I'm trying to make it a career, but I'm having so much fun being able to do this kind of stuff. So stick around. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That'll help me out a tremendous amount. We are trying to get to 30,000 by the end of 2020. We only got about two, two and a half weeks left to go, but I think we can make it happen. I just need your help. So subscribe if you haven't already. We got more amazing content coming for the ugly truck. I'm trying to get it fired up by the end of this year. I know it's going to be close, but I think we'll come in under the wire. I'll catch you next time, guys.